What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you the best settings to get the most cinematic footage out of your DJI Air 3. The Air 3 can produce some really amazing results, but if you just use the default settings you won't be nearly taking advantage of its full potential. And I've made a PDF checklist of the settings I'll be sharing, so make sure to check that out. I'll put a link in the description where you can download it for free. So the very first thing you'll want to do is to switch from auto mode into pro mode so that we have full control over the camera settings. And once you've done that, if you tap on the little camera settings in the corner, a box will pop pop up with most of the settings we need to change. So the first thing we'll want to set is our exposure settings. Now by default, it will be set to auto exposure where the drone will control the shutter speed and ISO automatically. And this can work if you're in a hurry, but it's not ideal because you have no control over what settings the drone decides to use. Now, if you do want to go with auto exposure, you can just click on auto by shutter speed and ISO and they'll turn yellow. And then you'll just adjust the brightness by using the EV slider underneath. But most of the time you'll want to have manual control over those settings for best results. So you want to disable auto on both ISO and shutter. And you'll want to have your ISO set as low as possible. I keep it set to ISO 195% of the time. In really low light, you may have to bump this up to get a bright enough image, but the higher you go, the worse the quality gets and the more noise and graininess you have. So try not to go above ISO 400 if at all possible. Next, you'll want to use the shutter speed to adjust the brightness of your shot. Now, ideally, you want to follow what's called the 180 degree shutter rule and set the shutter speed to double the frame rate. So for 30 frames per second, that would be 1 60th of a second because that will give you the most natural motion blur and make your shots much smoother. But the only problem is that most of the time setting your shutter speed this low will make your footage way too bright. And to fix that, you'll need to use ND filters, which are little filters that attach to the camera and cut down the amount of light that comes in. Now, unfortunately, as of the filming of this video, DJI isn't shipping the ND filters yet, so I can't demonstrate with the Air 3, but I'll put links to the ones that I would use. Now, even if you can't set the shutter speed to exactly double the frame rate for whatever reason, you can still get great shots. You'll just want to be aware that in bright light with a high shutter speed, you won't be getting proper motion blur, especially if there's a lot of motion. So now that we have our exposure settings set, we can click over into the second settings tab on the left where we have all the rest of our settings. First up, we have white balance, which is basically how warm or cool the shot is. Now you can just leave it on auto and it will do a decent job a lot of the time, but it could potentially change during the shot and sometimes it just simply gets it wrong. So I'd recommend that you turn off auto and set this manually. If it's sunny, you'll want to set the white balance to around 50 6600 Kelvin. If it's cloudy, you'll want it on up around 6300 Kelvin. And at sunrise and sunset, I like to have it set around 5600 Kelvin or a bit higher to make sure I get nice and warm colors. And sometimes if I want to set the white balance very quickly, I'll just click auto and let it set it and then click back to manual to lock it in. And often that will look decent without any extra adjustment. And then next we have resolution and frame rates. You'll want to set the resolution as high as possible. So for the Air 3, that would be 4K. If you want to shoot vertical video, you want to use the vertical 2.7K mode because it uses the full height of the 4x3 sensor instead of just cropping in in post into the shorter 16x9 aspect ratio. And then for frame rate, 24 frames per second is considered the most cinematic. But unless you strictly follow the 180 degree shutter rule and always use a 1 50th of a second shutter speed, your footage will end up looking jittery and not smooth. So in general, I'd recommend going with 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second if you're in Europe as your basic frame rate. And you can set the frame rate to 60 frames per second for any situations where you might want to slow the footage down in post. On the Air 3, there's really no significant downsides to shooting 60 frames per second besides larger file sizes. So you might as well use it if you think there's a chance you might want to slow it down. And if you really want to slow things down, you can switch over into slow motion mode and choose 4K 100 frames per second. There's also an option to shoot 1080 200 frames per second but it's not good enough quality that I'd recommend using it. Now in 100 frames per second and higher slow motion, the Air 3 doesn't use the image sensor's dual gain mode. So unless you're shooting something that you actually know you want to slow down to one quarter speed, I'd recommend sticking to 4K 60. And next we have color profile. Now usually I'd recommend to only shoot D-Log or Hybrid Log Gamma, but the Air 3 is the first drone that I've used that keeps almost all of the dynamic range of the image sensor, or in other words, keeping both the highlights and the shadows in the normal color profile. So it's the first drone that I can confidently say that you can shoot in normal color and still get good results without losing a lot of quality. But while you can get decent quick results straight out of the drone with normal color, you get a lot more color grading flexibility if you shoot in the 10-bit D-Log M or Hybrid Log Gamma modes. It's a lot easier to grade Hybrid Log Gamma footage compared to D-Log footage and it keeps more pop in mid-tone areas. But both Hybrid Log Gamma and Normal Color Profile do something weird where they'll adjust the contrast and brightness of parts of the image right in the middle of the shot. So while Hybrid Log Gamma would normally be my recommendation for most people because it's easier to grade, I'm going to have to go with D-Log as the 
preferred color profile for the Air 3. You definitely can get great results with hybrid log gamma, but this bug of changing the contrast and brightness in the middle of the shot has really been causing me problems. Now both hybrid log gamma and D-log M footage will need to be color graded to look good, and even normal color profile will benefit a lot from color grading, so if you want to learn how to color grade your footage, I'll link a video in the description where I explain how I color grade my drone shot. So those are all the camera settings we can access from the camera settings box on the live feed page. One more thing before we dive into the menus is that you'll want to use either the one times or three times zoom settings, which is basically switching between the two cameras, because if you go somewhere in between, you're using digital zoom, which will give you terrible image quality. And a quick tip, if you have the DJI RC2, I have the C2 button on the back set to switch between the one time and three times cameras on the fly without having to use the touch screen. So then diving into the settings, first we'll go to the control tab and there are a lot of settings here, but we're going to focus on the ones that are important for getting cinematic footage, which are gain and expo tuning settings. Here we have separate settings for how the drone responds to your stick inputs in cine, normal, and sport modes. And these settings are especially important on the Air 3 because we have the three times telecamera, which shows up any jerky movements much more than the wide angle camera would. Now for cine mode, I just leave all these settings on default. I don't really use cine mode a whole lot, and for when I do, the default settings are just fine. Now in normal mode, I have the max horizontal ascent and descent speeds all set to max, maximum angular velocity, which is how fast the drone turns, set to 75 degrees per second, yaw smoothness set at 5, and braking at 100. And I leave the expo settings at the default of 0.25 for the up and down and pitch and roll axis, and 0.2 for the yaw. And then under gimbal, I have the max tilt speed set to 15 degrees per second, and smoothness set to 8. And then for sport mode, I've changed a few more settings because I like to be able to fly at the maximum speed and still be able to make fine adjustments. The maximum horizontal ascent and descent are all at the max, and then the max angular velocity is set to 89 degrees per second, and the yaw smoothness is set to 11, and brake sensitivity is again at 100. And then under expo, up and down is set to 0.3, yaw is set to 0.19, and pitch and roll is set to 0.35. And under gimbal, max speed is set at 25 degrees a second, and smoothness is set at 18. Now these settings aren't the only settings that can work well. I'd encourage you to do your own testing and figure out what settings work best for how you fly, but these are the settings that I've found give the best results after several dozen flights with the Air 3. And if you want to learn how to create cinematic drone moves with your Air 3, I'll leave a link to my top 12 drone moves in the description as well. And then moving over into the camera settings tab, a lot of the settings that are here we've already looked at in the live view camera settings, but there are a few more settings here that we need to change. First of all, you want to enable the histogram, which enables you to judge your exposure. In short, you want to have the mountain of data sitting in the middle of the histogram, which means you aren't losing data either in the highlights or the shadows. If you have the mountain all bunched up on the right side, it means your exposure is too bright, and if it's all bunched up on the left, it means that it's too dark. And then I always have the thirds grids line and center marker turned on. The thirds lines help you to compose your shots according to the rule of thirds, which says that basically you want to put important parts of the image like the horizon or subject on one of those horizontal or vertical thirds lines. And the center marker is helpful if you want to precisely center something in the frame or even just see exactly where you're headed. So there you have my cinematic camera settings for the Air 3. This is actually a condensed version of one of the lessons in my course, so if you'd like to see more drone video tips just like this, check out the Flying Filmmaker course where I have over 60 tutorials showing in depth how I film cinematic drone shots, edit them together into engaging videos, color grade my footage to give it that cinematic look, and more. And you can check that out at flyingfilmmakerpro.com, or if you aren't ready to dive into the full course, I have a completely free training where I share my top 10 secrets to cinematic drone shots. And of course, links to everything will be in the description. And finally, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.